Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. You guys are diehards. You're like, man, I'm going to church no matter if it's Thanksgiving Eve. I'm going to church. I'm, you guys are awesome. You know, we talked about this. We always do every year. Like, should we cancel, you know, our Wednesday night because it's Thanksgiving Eve? I'm like, heck no. We're going to have service even if it's five people. And, uh, and so I'm glad, I'm glad you made it. I'm so glad you made it. I want to I wanna help us, I want to prepare us for probably the best Thanksgiving service of your life. And the only way that can happen is by you having a, a better understanding of, of what, what we're really thankful for. And really understanding that, you know, God got the ball rolling on Thanksgiving before this earth or this world created any type of holiday like Thanksgiving. And, uh, and I, I really pray and hope that today that you have ears to hear and eyes to see and a heart ready to receive and, and get something fresh in you so that when you sit at the table tomorrow with your family, friends, coworkers, whoever you're hanging out with, that, that you bring a revelation of how awesome and thankful we are for a God who's been so filled with grace and mercy for your life, my life. And, uh, and so, uh, and, and, and here's the reality. You know what, I'm sure... You know what, uh, many of us believe that we're going to eat the best turkey at our house tomorrow. You know, I bet most of you would say, man, my turkey is good. And then, of course, the next person is going to come back and say, well, guess what, my turkey is gooder. And, uh, and everybody's just going to jock for position, right, because everybody claims, <laughs> everybody claims, say claims, everybody claims to have the best turkey in their home. And, uh, and that's, that's awesome. You know what? You have the right to value your own opinion. Praise God, right? But my turkey is better than all of you. <laughs> but it's true. You know what? Everyone is going to have a nice Thanksgiving meal tomorrow. And, and, uh, and everyone's going to be claiming how amazing that turkey was, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, but I want you to know that, uh, that in, this, in this world, everyone becomes a food critic, if you've noticed. When you think about people going to restaurants, right? Everyone always wants to qualify the place you go and eat, right? So you, you base the quality on service uh, and definitely taste, right? Like, man, that food better taste good. Um, I'll tell you this, man. There's not many good Mexican restaurants in Santa Cruz. I can tell that right now. There isn't. I drive all the way to Santa Paula or Woodland Hills to go get me some Mexican food. And, uh, and as, as a matter of fact, this last week, I went to go get some pozole. And, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? As I was in uh, this restaurant all the way in Santa Paula, they're like, they're like uh, hey, how are you? They already know me. They're like, hey, how are you doing? I'm like, good. They're like, why do you drive over here? I'm, I'm like, because you know what? Because there's no good Mexican food in Santa Cruz. They're like, oh, there's no Mexican restaurants there? I said, no, there's no good Mexican restaurants there. <laughs> there isn't. I'm like, your stuff tastes good. That I'm willing to drive this far to come get, get the grub. You know, and that's, mind you, that's, that's like, a, like a, a total, like maybe... 50-minute drive back and forth, maybe an hour. It's a drive to get to Santa Paula, but you know what? It's worth the drive when you find something that's so good. And, uh, and of course, you know what? We, we all start qualifying, and we start sharing our, our experience, our service, and, and, and we just start talking to different people about how we, how we felt about the restaurant. And, and then everybody starts kind of, you know, you know, talking about, the place you eat, like, oh, I've eaten there, like, one of my favorite places, and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of give them a shout-out, but Taco Reyes. If you want some really good Mexican food, Taco Reyes is the place in Woodland Hills, and, uh, and I know the owner's there as well. <laughs> I'm known by all these Mexican restaurants, but, but check this out. But society, but society, stay with me, okay? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just kind of going on a trail. Stay with me. It's all going to come together. But in society, in society, um, it has come up with some words to qualify the level of, 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 of experience, service, and even taste. And, and you've seen that. Let me show you a few right here. This is some of the stuff that people have said when we talk about the quality. Uh, people say, hey, man, how was that? I was poor. It was fair. It was good. Or it was great. And, and this one's a rare one. It was excellent. Very rare can you find excellent anything nowadays. But this is how the world, the world society qualifies the places they go and experience their meal. And, and then, of course, they go on social media and they hit Yelp up. 
right? How many use Yelp? If you really want to find out about a restaurant, you just go to Yelp. Well, it sucks, but they do that at churches now too. <laughs> it's like a restaurant. It's dogged, you know. It's true. Christians go church shopping too, so don't, don't, don't hate. But, uh, and then they start putting up all their experiences on social media. And, and so the, the, the world is a, is a, is a critic now. Uh, it's easy to, to find information uh, or even to, to, to see what the grade that uh, uh, a restaurant has been given uh, for, their, for their, their, their service. Well, well, let me tell you something. God, okay, God also loves to be graded. But, but God's, not, God's not trying to, to do something to, to convince you that he's awesome, that he's great. He's, he's so confident that when you come to him, that you're going to give him a five-star you're going to give him the most incredible review. Let me show you the first service, the, the first uh, scripture real quick. Um, Psalms 34, 8 says this. It says, taste and see that the Lord is what? God says, I want you to have a little taste. Now, what's, what's, what's taste? Well, taste is, is about flavor. Taste is about uh, uh, texture or substance. And God is saying, I double dog dare you to just taste me. Just taste me and you're going to realize that I am good. I'm good like that. Oh, but, but let me be honest with you. There's a difference between the, the, the good that you and I use every day. Like that was good. I mean, for example, let's say you're going to go and... Um, and, and fix your car, and, and it was causing you trouble, and the, the, the mechanic comes out, and he brings back your keys, and, and you ask him, hey, um, how's my car now? Eh, it's good. How many would be satisfied with it's good? I don't think so. I want you to say, man, your car is awesome. It's great, man. You're not going to have a problem. Again. But, but our good is kind of like, yeah. Hmm. If someone ever tells you, it's good. It's really bad. It's not that good, right? When I love something, I'm like, man, that was awesome. That was great. But when I hear, it was good, it's good. I'm nervous. Like, what do you mean? Like, how was service? It was good. What do you mean it was good, man? We just put our best foot forward. What do you mean it was good? Man, I want to hear it was great. When I go to Elevate Church, it's great. You have a, a great experience, man. You, you, you taste the goodness of God every time you come into Elevate Church. And, man, it's amazing. You leave changed. You leave, you leave filled. Right? That's what we want people to say about Elevate Church. And, uh, and, and we want people to taste and, and to experience and to, and to also uh, have the, 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 the opportunity also to, to feel the service that we give here. And, and so God is saying, hey, listen, I want you to taste and see. Think about it. This Thanksgiving, God wants us to not only taste the flavor of our food, but God wants us to taste the goodness of God. Stay with me. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm just set, setting up the foundation. You guys there? Say it with me. Taste and see that the Lord is good. So check this out. So, so Jesus starts the first Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, you know he's preaching, teaching. The crowds are following him, and and he says, "Man," he looks at his disciples. He says, "Hey, let's let's open the restaurant today," and the disciples are like. What? What do you mean? Let's open the restaurant. And he's like, yeah, um, I, want, I want to feed the, uh, the 5,000. You guys remember the story of the 5,000? So I want to feed the 5,000. Now, mind you, when, when you read the word and they start giving numbers, it, it, only, it only reflects men, never women and children. So if you were to study the verse that I'm about to read to you in John 6, uh, the actual number with men, women, and children was actually 14,000. So yes, we talk about the 5,000, but it's really 14,000 people. And so Jesus looks at his disciples. They're hanging out, and they're at the restaurant. And then Jesus saying, we're opening. We're going for business. And they're just like, what the? What, what? And so here's, um, here's the story. John chapter 6, he's about to have the most craziest Thanksgiving dinner ever and he has all kinds of invites, and it's just a whole other level of good is what these people experience. You guys ready? John 6. Here we go. 
John 6, verse 5, and we're going to read all the way to verse 13. Stay with me now. He says, Jesus looked up and he saw a large crowd coming toward him. So he said to Philip, where can we buy some bread for these people to eat? Look at this. And he asked this only to put Philip to the test. You ever go taste testing too? It's good. And he already knew what he was going to do. And Philip answered him. Check this out. Philip answered him. Man, it would take eight months worth of pay in order for us to buy enough bread to even feed each one of them just to have a bite. It would take eight months worth of work for us to have the money, the finances, to be able to provide for so many people Jesus. And that would just mean they would just get a little bite and that's it. It's like, you know what, I remember when, when, uh, um, when, when I was a kid and we didn't have food, you know, sometimes my, my siblings and I, we would have to share a tortilla or we'd share a celery stick with peanut butter and we'd have to pass the celery stick around. You're, anybody ever grow up like that? Yeah? Okay, God bless all of you. We're blessed. <laughs> well, that was, that's the way it was for us. You know, in Oaxaca, Mexico, you know, I've been to some of the houses of our kids. And you know what? And I would hear the stories of, like, like they would share food amongst four or five sibling, you know, brothers and sisters. And they would eat from one plate. They would all share and pass the plate around. And so just to get the big idea, these, dis these disciples were challenged. These Christians, these believers were being challenged of not understanding what God wants to do in their life. And so many of us right now, we really don't understand that God wants to do something greater in your life. God wants to do something more in your life. And, and you know what? When, when you look at the numbers, when you look at the reality of your life, when you're constantly living in it day and night, day and night, it kind of just, uh, you, you kind of lose connection with your faith and, and your hope and your trust. And, and so the disciples, think about it. They've been walking with him. They've seen blind eyes open. They've seen lame people walk. They've seen the greatest miracles. And they're still yet troubled with the idea of feeding people. And so they start coming up with excuses on Thanksgiving Day. It's going to take about eight months worth of work, man. What are you talking about, man? Don't give them false hope. Look at this. I love this. And this is my favorite part. And just for each one, I have a bite. <laughs> and and there's, there's such, a, there's such a, a complex to Christianity today of, of, of not enough. Let me tell you something. God is more than enough. And this is the season where you have, to, you have to ask yourself, man, am I like this disciple? Is this how I view my God right now? Do I view him like he's not enough to take care of my need? Do I see God like, like he's not sufficient to handle my situation? Please stay with me because I want us to, to enter in thanksgiving mañana with praise. We're going to enter in tomorrow with praise. And so, can we keep reading? And another of his disciples, look at this, man. Look at this. This is everybody at the, at the table talking to Jesus, preparing for Thanksgiving. Another of his disciples spoke up. He says, it was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And he said, hey, look, here's a boy with five small loaves. We can jack him. Take his bread. And he also has two fish. We'll take that from him too. But look at this. Another disciple said this. But how far is this going to go? <laughs> Why waste our time? So what? He's got five, five, five loaves, two fish. How far is that going to take us? How far are we going to get with this? And there's so many people right now that have the, how far is this going to get? Like, why even try? Why, why even bother anymore? Why, why, why invite that family member anymore? Man, you know they're just going to be cray-cray. For what? Why? And, and see, that's not, that's not the kind of person 
That's not the kind of believer that God wants on his team. God wants a person that has tasted and seen that the Lord is good no matter what it looks like. And this was not looking good. And so he says, how far is that going to go in such a large crowd? And Jesus said, have the people sit down, man. What's wrong with you? There was plenty of grass in that place. And they sat down, and the number of men were among 5,000. And then Jesus took the loaves, and he... <laughs> it was the first Thanksgiving service of the Bible. He took the bread, and he gave... You see, what we see right now, what, you, what you're experiencing, you know, I don't have enough opportunity. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough privilege. I don't have enough education. I don't have enough. You finish the sentence. Well, let me tell you something. When you begin to understand, when you have tasted and seen, that's why God's saying, I need you to first taste me. Because once you taste me, you're going to realize that the taste buds that I'm going to leave in your mouth, you're going to want to come back for more. You're going to want to come back for some more. In other words, you're not only going to want to come back for some more, but you're going to realize that this is the only place I want to go for for my grub. And so he says, he gave thanks and he did the same with the fish. And so he did the same with the, so he gave thanks for the bread. Thank you, Father, for the bread. He gave thanks for the fish. Thank you, Father, for the fish. And I really believe what God is saying is, hey, listen, okay, you may not have enough money, but what do you have? Let's give thanks for what I do have. Right? Yeah? You, you, you may not, for example, I'm going to be vulnerable. I only have 60% of my lungs that are functional. 60% of my lungs work. 40% doesn't. I can sit every day and think about the 40% I don't have, or I can sit down every day like I have for over 10 years and say, thank you for the 60. Thank you for the 60, God. I thank you that the 60 is going to be more than enough. I don't, obviously God is not surprised that I have 60% capacity in my lungs. But obviously, because I have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, 60 is enough. And then he does more with 60 than I can do with 100. Do, do you get this understanding? Because if not, you'll always complain about it's not enough. How far is this going to get us? How will we ever do it? And that, let me tell you something, that's not Thanksgiving anymore. That's complaining. And, and let me tell you something. I don't know about you, but complaining people are the kind of people most people want to stay away from. It's like, oh, there they go again. Here's Uncle, here's Uncle Pepe coming again. Let's, I'm going to sit over here. Hey, where are you going, me? I'm going to go get another, you know, stick. I'll be right back. Whatever. You, you just, you just want just to wanna stay away. Come on, some of you know, it's probably, you probably do have an Uncle Pepper and you don't want to go see tomorrow. But you know what I mean, right? It's just like, and so Jesus is amongst these disciples that obviously they, they, they've seen what God can do. And yet they're having a complex issue with, with realizing that God is not only good, but God is more than able to handle whatever it is he's wanting to do. And so now... They're at this place where he's giving thanks, right? And look at this. Here's the miracle, right? And so he gave them uh, as, look at this. I love this. So he gave thanks. He handed out the bread to those who were seated. He gave them as much as they wanted. And he did the same with the fish. And when all of them had what? Enough to eat. The original version, if you read the, the, the King James Version, it says, and they ate until they were filled. Have you ever eaten so much turkey that, man, it's like your stomach just felt like you're about to explode? You know what? I do this every year. You unbutton your pants bun, right? Or you undo the belt. 
And you know what? And you never, you can never sit straight, right? So what happens? You serve it on the couches like this, just laying back like, oh, like why did I eat that last piece? Why did, and we all, we've all had the same conversation here. Well, let me tell you something. Listen, God did not just meet a need. He exceeded the need. But it started with thanks. God will meet your need and exceed your need when you start learning how to give thanks for what you do have and not being so focused on what you don't have right now. That's a different type of thanksgiving. That's a different type of good. And so here they're just stuffed. The Bible says they ate until they were filled. I mean, just stuffed. They were satisfied. They were above satisfied. And, and so I love this. And he says, and look at this. I love this because he says, now after they, they were all filled or they all had enough to eat, he says this. He says, now all of them had enough to eat. Jesus spoke to his disciples. He says, now gather leftover pieces, he said. Come on. God doesn't just satisfy you. God doesn't just fill you. God has leftovers like many of us are going to have on Friday. See, that's how good God is. As a matter of fact, have you ever noticed that leftovers taste better than the original day? And notice that God wasted nothing. And he tells his disciple, gather the leftover pieces. Don't waste anything. Nothing. And let me tell you something. I can only speak for myself. But having to go through what I went through with, which now has caused me to have a certain percentage of lung capacity, God doesn't waste anything. God says, Mauricio, you have 60, I'm your reserve. I got leftover, bro. I can do more. I have leftovers. And she says, they got the leftover from the five barely loaves and they filled 12 baskets with the pieces left by those who had eaten. I love this. I love this because I'm telling you right now, when you think about what, 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 what these disciples were struggling with as Jesus was starting the first Thanksgiving dinner <laughs> of the Bible, they were struggling with things like, well, we need eight months of income to just get a bite. Oh, well, how much further can we go with five breads, two fish? Oh, it's not enough. And God's like, no, see, you have to realize that Jesus was the perfect model of Thanksgiving. And what he did is he grabbed what he did have. All right, what do you have right now? You know what? Well, you know what? Uh, my family's crate crate, but you have a family, praise God. And you can give thanks for that. Right? Maybe it's not what you want it to be, but let me tell you something. What I love about my God is my God is not a God who just meets a need. My God exceeds the need. He is not just a good God. See, because the word good stands alone. But when you talk about the goodness of God... That, God, God's not just good. He has many names. He is good. He is great. He is awesome. He is magnificent. He is author and finisher. He is king of kings, lord of lords. Come on. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's the alpha. He's the omega. So that, that's not the kind of good that we talk about every day, right? Come on, he's the Ephesians 4. He's the exceedingly, abundantly, above anything that we can ask for. That's the God that we serve. But we got to come back to the place of righteous thanksgiving. It's not about the turkey. It's about the goodness of God. The turkey is the bonus. That's the plus. We have to change the spirit of thanksgiving. I don't know what you're, what you're dealing with. I, I don't know what your lack is. I, I don't know. I don't know what your challenge. It doesn't just. It doesn't just need to be something that's that's, uh, you know, financial. It doesn't have to be, you know, something that's that's how. I mean, what lack do you? have right now maybe you lack peace okay but what do you have and it's changing 
the way you see things. And you're going to be like, okay, God, this is my situation. But, man, I know that if I just bring this attitude, if I just bring whatever it is I do have, and I just begin to lift it up, and I just begin to say, thank you, God. Thank you for what I do have. And let me tell you something, and God will multiply it. He'll multiply your peace. He'll multiply your finances. He'll multiply. Well, how is that possible? Well, the story of the five, the five loaves, two fish, that was a miracle story. Well, guess what? Your thanksgiving can create a miracle for your life. It can. It can create a miracle. And the only thing that can stop your miracle is your complaining. That's the only thing that can stop your miracle. Is being the person that always says, it's not enough. How far is this going to take us anyway? Man, we'd have to work for eight months. We'd have to do this. Let me tell you a true story. When we first started Elevate Church, um, you know what? Our heart has always been missions. And immediately I wanted to do stuff. Um, in Mexico, Tijuana, we couldn't go further abroad because, you know, we couldn't afford plane tickets and, you know, hotels and meals we couldn't afford any of that as a church so you know what I said I said I said well but what do we have well we got a busted van out in the parking lot and we got San Diego not too far from here that has a little border that can take us into Tecate Mexico and <clears throat> and I and and we found out that there were children okay and families that worked in the in the in the dumps the trash dumps and they were uh, brick makers. And, um, and we heard that on Christmas, they, they, they don't have, it's, it's like a normal day. So I rallied our church and I rallied 60 volunteers. And 60 of us got them whatever. And then I had a jacked up bus too. I mean, we had a lot of jacked up stuff. But we, got, we had some stuff. <laughs> and so we just took, we took whatever was broke. And, and we all packed it, and we got in, and of course, and we rented vehicles as well. I mean, we did what we could. And we went there, and we, oh yeah, we also, we, we, we had the church bring toys. And man, I was working hard. Companies like, hey, can I have some toys? And, and well, you have to go over here. And I would run to downtown LA because, okay, we'll give you this free. I didn't care. Wherever I can get free 99, I went. You see, I didn't have the money, but I had legs. I had feet, I had hands, and I had a mouth that can go and speak on behalf of a child. And so we went, we gathered toys, okay, we gathered toys, and it was only probably about maybe 400 toys, something like that. That's a lot of toys. We get to Tecate, Mexico, a thousand children show up. We're like, what? Sarah, were you there? I mean, were there? Who was there with me on that one? They're all gone. God bless them. See? <laughs> Thank you for your faith. But let me tell you something. Me and my team were like, oh, my God. What are we going to do? And, and you know what? We started laying out the toys. And I told everybody, nobody tell our volunteers that we don't have enough. Nobody I don't even want to hear it. Nobody says nothing. Why? Because I, I don't want anybody to jinx this whole thing and be like, oh, my God, we don't have enough to have I don't want to hear that. I'm like, I already know what we don't have. I don't need someone to come tell me, oh, my God, Pastor, we don't have. I don't need no one to tell me that. I'm well aware of what I don't have. And let me tell you something. And so we laid them out, and, and the lines were going, and I'm just like, oh, my God, how do you tell a child we don't have one for you? And the child were going. It was one toy per child. One and let me tell you something, the line, okay, a thousand children went through. And all we did with the team is we prayed, we said, God, you see our situation right now, God. And I remembered the story, this one, that's why I'm preaching this one. I said, Father, I've seen, I've read, I've, I've tasted that you were good to the people of then. And you can be good to the people of now. And so, Father, I'm asking you that somehow, some way that you can do something. And, and you know what? One of our team members says, let's just go back and count the toys. I'm like, no, nobody's going to count. You see, because when you start counting, you're in the way. It's true. You're jacking up your miracle. 
I said, nobody counts. Nobody. The line's going through. The very last child comes. All 1,000 children got a toy and there was one left. One left. Because God not only meets the need, He exceeds the need. And He has leftovers. This Thanksgiving, change your attitude and start having some gratitude for what you do have. Can we get, yeah, that man. Yeah. You got to. Listen, I can go on all night and tell you crazy miracles. But I, I, all I did was this. Thank you, Father, that I can't. And, of course, I'm not going to be like, I was super faith. No. I was freaking out, man. I was like, oh, my God. what are we <laughs> And then I was like, okay, God, you better do something because this looks like a job for you right now. Because, and, and you know what? I thought to myself, oh, my God. We brought the kids, we and we had enough food. It was every, the whole thing, the whole trip was a miracle. And then we told everybody because we knew we had 400 toys. And then we told everybody, guess what? There was 1,000 children. Obviously, they knew that. And I said, we, 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 we were all, we were, we were crying because of the the one toy left. We we're crying. We're like, oh my God. You know why? Because when you trust God, no matter what it looks like, you will taste and see that the Lord is good. He will leave a good taste in your mouth. Maybe someone has left you a bad taste, but God will always leave you a good taste. Stand to your feet. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.